I'd like to take a moment here uh, to talk about a concept called uh, minutes of angle. Now, uh, minutes of angle is an angular form of measurement, just like degrees. It's actually uh, uh, a more refined uh, measurement than degrees. There's 360 degrees in a circle, correct? Uh, well, in each degree, there's 360 minutes of angle. So in one circle, there's 21,600 minutes of angle. So it's, it's a bit more refined. Now, minutes of angle also adapts to the distance that we're using it at. It's kind of a constant form of measurement. So let's look at this chart to uh, kind of understand what I'm talking about here. Now, we use 100 meters as kind of the, the base uh, for our minutes of angle uh, measurement. And that's because it uh, equals or about equals one inch at 100 yards. Well, what do you mean about? Well, actually, it's 1.047 inches at 100 yards, but it's pretty close. We rounded off to uh, one inch. So we kind of use that as our basis, one. Now, once we go to 200 yards, it doubles to two inches. 300 is three inches. So it's kind of easy to remember. 300 is three, 200 is two, 100 is one. And then when we go back to 50, it's uh, halved at uh, uh, a half inch. So how does that help us? Well, most of our sites gauge our corrections in minutes of angle, or MOA. So if you open up the manufacturer's manual, it's going to tell you, like, for instance, this EOTech, one click equals one half MOA. Now, they do this to kind of simplify things. So understanding minutes of angle and understanding that one click gets me a half minute of angle uh, in movement, I understand that one click will give me a half inch at 100 meters. It'll give me one inch at 200 meters. So very quickly, I can understand, you know, how many clicks to make an adjustment out of distance to move my uh, round strike. I hope that makes sense. All right, so let's go ahead and start working with our ballistic calculator programs to get some usable data uh, that we can use as a basis for our laser bore lighting and, and zeroing. Uh, so like I said before, uh, the specific app that I use is uh, Ballistic for iPad. Uh, now this, this is a paid app. It's got a lot of great features and it, it's what I've stuck with. Uh, there, there's some other ones out there and I've tried most of them. Uh, this one's also based off of the free web uh, service, the uh, JBM Ballistic Calculator. It's widely used in the industry. Uh, of course, there are free-to-use programs out there that you could download or use on the web. Uh, but I'm just going to walk you through uh, this to show you some of the conveniences and how I use it. Now, of course, everything I'm showing you here, uh, you can apply to whatever uh, free software uh, you're going to use. So that's no issues. So, of course, i got my iPad set up here. And... Uh, the first thing that you're going to need to know is one of those pieces of information I told you you need to find from your manufacturer is the ballistic coefficient. Now there's a, a few options here. I can either uh, tap this and manually enter it in, uh, like if you're uh, using a, a reloader uh, to load your rounds uh, and he has that data, which he should, uh, you can get that from him and just manually punch it in. If not, you can go into uh, their, their list here. They've got a list of you know, commonly used calibers and uh, uh, types of uh, ammunition. Uh, now, of course, AR-15, I'm, I'm using uh, 5.56 or uh, 223 caliber ammunition. Of course, since this is a civilian app, they're, they're going to uh, use uh, caliber instead of uh, millimeters. So, you know, if you're running a 5.56 gun, just understand that uh, you're going to be looking at 223. Now, also understand that you're not going to be looking at 223. You're going to be looking at 224. Remember I said in uh, earlier chapters, the round is actually slightly larger than the diameter of the barrel, internal diameter of the barrel, so that lands and grooves can engage the round and impart spin on it. So your 223 round that you buy is actually a 224 round. So of course I'll, I'll select that. Now here you can see I can scroll through here and you know see all the different uh, uh, manufacturers. So if you're you're buying stuff that's uh, right off the shelf, uh, this will work great for you. And of course you see the regular government ones. So if you're buying a XM lot, uh, that's that's. M lot, it's just cast offs. That's the same kind of thing. So if you're using, you know, 193, 885, or SS109, uh, you can just hit that and it's uh, already got some of the presets in there. So kind of useful. Uh, the next thing that we're going to need, of course, we know bullet diameters 224, is our bullet weight. Now I'm, I'm shooting uh, 55 grain Hornady uh, reloads out of this uh, for a lot of range work. So I've got 55 grains. If you're using 62 or whatever you're using, you just need to place that in there. And then your native drag model. 
these drag models are just different models for measuring the uh, ballistic uh, coefficient or the, the drag of the, the round. And you just need to know which one it is. It's not really important to understand the differences uh, between all of these uh, drag models. Uh, just understand which one the manufacturer used uh, when they came up with their, their coefficients. So, and then we've got muzzle velocity. Now, of course, I've, I've cheated a little bit. I've already shot this through a uh, chronograph and uh, the ammunition that I'm using, so I, I know what my muzzle velocity is. Uh, but if you don't, once again, that's another piece of information you need from your manufacturer so you can get a baseline. Now, of course, it's going to differ out of your rifle unless you're shooting a 20-inch barrel uh, like they use for testing. And even then, you still could have some uh, small variances in velocity just based off of your uh, twist rate or uh, it could even be, uh, uh, you know, the altitude that you're firing at. So uh, just uh, use the manufacturer's data. And of course, we're assuming here that we, we haven't shot our guns. We're, we're just starting off from the, the beginning. So uh, put the manufacturer's data in there. Uh, the next thing is chronograph distance. Now this is the uh, the distance from the muzzle of the gun to the uh, measured point on the chronograph that it uses to collect the data from. Now it's very important that you reference your chronograph's manual to determine the optimum distance from the gun that you need to place it at. And then you need to precisely measure it, like I said with the, with the tape that I had out there, and then uh, you, you go ahead and put that in precisely. It's very important that you, you, you make it uh, precise. Um, and then we're just going to scroll through here, and then we've got a uh, zero range. Now for, for zero range, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put in, uh, let, let's do a starting point. Uh, let's say 50, 50 yards. And then we need my sight height. We're not going to worry about uh, zero height or zero offset. We leave that at zero, but sight height is very important. The best way to measure your sight height is to actually take a long cleaning rod, extend it through to the chamber, then take a measuring tape and measure from the center of the cleaning rod to the center of the viewing pane of your optic. Okay. Now, if you're running it on standard rails, usually your, your standard height is going to be about 2.5 inches. It could be a little off. We want to be as precise as possible. Uh, I'm on a riser. I, I like mine up a little bit higher for a few reasons, so I'm running a 3.5. So I want to make sure that I, I put this in here. There we go, 3.5. Now we don't worry about line of sight angle. This is just another feature that uh, this has if, if I chose to use it. Then I'm going to scroll down here. I'm going to put my maximum range out to uh, 400 just because I, I, I want it out to 300, but I want to see a little bit past it to see what that round's doing. Um, and then the next thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to set my range increments. Of course, my minimum range is, is zero. Uh, I want to have it at that. Now, I've got this set at uh, five yard increments. That might be a little bit uh, too much. Let's, let's go for 10, 10 yard increments. So what that's going to do here is it's going to show uh, every, every 10 yards, it's going to show me what the bullet's doing. Now, uh, the next thing that we want to do is set our vital zone radius. Uh, now, what that's doing is it's just showing us what deviation that we are from our line of sight. Uh, so, basically, our ability to hit a, a target by center holding and how much deviation is acceptable. So, I have that set at uh, 6 inches for right now. And that just gives me kind of a visual cue. So, now, when, once I scroll through here, we notice that I, I start out 3.5 inches. Well, before that, let's talk about another uh, uh, feature of this app. I can tap right here and use my location, and it's automatically going to pull the uh, light data. So you see it's a, hey, it's a 90 degrees in the shade here in Texas, so uh, you'll probably see me sweating here a little bit, uh, and humidity is at 49%. So it'll automatically pull in this atmospheric data to include my altitude, uh, the, the barometric pressure, and it will automatically calculate this for me, where I'm standing. So I can take this wherever I go, and it'll automatically calculate it for me. So it, it's really handy to have. Now, of course, you know, if you're using some sort of web-based application, now hopefully you'll have access to the internet where you're at, uh, but you, you may have to use like a Kestrel, like I had out here before. So just something to think about. Uh, there's some more advanced features uh, with inputting winds and other things that I'm just not going to go into. This thing has a lot of features, uh, but this is just the one that I'm using right now. So uh, here we go. So the, the top here is just a, a summary of what's going on here. Uh, you know, so if I print this out for record, it's going to show me what data I had. Uh, now, of course, I'm starting uh, three and a half inches uh, below my line of sight. That's why it has a negative value, right? Because my sight's up here, barrel's down here. So the bullet's starting out at equal distance from my sight height to the barrel, so 3.5.
And then because the barrel's angled up during the zeroing process, and that's what we're gonna do, uh, it's going to uh, start moving up towards our line of sight. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just scroll down, and what I'm looking for is the largest number. Of course, I'm just looking at range and a uh, drop. So I'm just going through here, and I see, okay, my maximum height is uh, 3.57 inches, and uh, that's at 170 meters. So that's my terminal ordinate. That's, that's as high as the bullet's going to get over my line of sight. Eh, that's not too bad. And now when I scroll down through here, I can see at 300, I'm uh, 2.71 inches below. So that's not too bad. That, that means I can pretty much center hold uh, on a, on a 6-inch target uh, from 0 to 300 meters and not have to worry about any uh, holdovers and hold-unders. I can almost hold center on a 3-inch target. Uh, now, what if I want to play around with that? Now, when we bring our zero range in, it's going to increase the maximum height over our line of sight that the round's going to be, okay? And we're, we're going to gain a little bit uh, on the back end. As we push it out, it's going to drop, and we're going to lose a little bit on the back end. Now, let's, let's show you how this, this works here. So, let's say I want to play around with this, and I'm, I'm not really happy with that zero distance. Let's uh, bump this out to 60, say. Okay, so we see here I'm, I'm point A and point impact at uh, 60, and we push it out here. Now the bullet's only getting uh, 2.03, so about 2 inches over my line of sight at uh, 150 meters. Okay, so that's, that's, that's pretty good. It's not a lot of offset. But now look at what it did here. I'm outside of that 6-inch deviation before I ever hit 300 meters. Now, one thing I like to caution, yeah, I like to have my bullet as close to point of aim and point of impact at my kind of maximum effective range that I'm really going to work with in the, in the practical uh, world, uh, as close to zero as possible. Because out of that distance, it's very difficult to distinguish three inches or two inches on a body at 300 meters. Even with a three by magnifier, it's really difficult. Uh, so what I'd like to be able to do is hold center on my desired point of aim. Uh, so that, that's the whole idea behind it. So what I'm really doing here is I'm, I'm trading the, the negative uh, effects that having an increased, um, you know, uh, round over, over our sight height, uh, round over our line of sight at our intermediate ranges, which we don't want, for more point of aim, point of impact at 300. So I'm actually taking my zero ranges and I'm pushing them out and backing them in until I can get a balanced approach between my round over line of sight at our intermediate range and our close to point of aim, point of impact at 300. Uh, so that, that's kind of a bit much. Now if we push it in to say uh, 30, now look at what's happening here. We're getting considerably over our uh, our line of sight. Matter of fact, we're going to be uh, 11 and three quarters inches at uh, 230 meters. Uh, that's pretty excessive, and that's just another example, you know, of how standardized zeros really aren't going to work for your system. It's really going to depend on what you're shooting. If I was shooting, uh, you know, a little bit of a uh, heavier grained round. Uh, you know, or if it was going a little bit slower, I, I might be able to work with, uh, you know, a closer in zero. But for this, uh, the round that I'm shooting out of this, it, it's moving at a pretty good rate of speed. I'm, I'm just, a, just a shade over 3,000 feet per second. So uh, moving my zero range in too much is, is really going to get uh, that, you know, that round arcing up uh, just quite a bit too high. So I've actually played around with mine, and what I actually have mine set at is 48 yards, and that's what I'm running. Uh, so you can see here with a 48, uh, what I'm getting is 3.9 at 170, and at 300 I'm negative uh, 2.54, and really I'm within that standard deviation uh, of six inches at about 329 meters. Uh, so that, that's kind of where I like it. So, you know, that's just an example of uh, you know how refined uh, you can work your zero, uh, you know, to to get to get you as accurate as possible you know, and uh, not have to worry about uh, holdovers and hold-unders, uh, you know, because when you first start out, you really just want to be concentrating on the center of that bullseye and uh, getting that round in there as soon as possible uh, and as accurate as possible. 
and uh, you know we can start worrying about teaching holdovers and hold unders once we understand the basic marksmanship process. So uh, pretty easy. So what I can do here now is if if I want to I can chart this. I can uh, scroll down here and uh, check out a ballistic chart, and that's actually going to uh, uh, chart my data. And I can take this. I can print it. I can share it. I can print this wirelessly. Um, you know, if I'm within the wireless range of my house uh, or whatever, I can just hook it up to the printer and print out this chart. Or I can print out uh, the uh, this chart right here. Now, of course, this is a lot of information to to deal with. Uh, do I really need to know where my bullet is every 10 meters? No, probably not. So if I'm going to print out a range card, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to change this. Let's say 50. 50 would be good. And there we go. Now we've got a, a fairly small chart here. Uh, so what we can do is we can print this, we can shrink it down, laminate it, you can uh, you know, tape it to your stock, uh, you can stick it in your cargo pocket, uh, you can have it there as a reference when you're out on the range. So if you do need to hold over or hold under to pull off a precise shot, uh, you've got that data for you. So some things to think about. Now, we're still not quite ready to uh, use this data for uh, laser bore light yet because there's, there's something that we need to find. Uh, and what that is, is the difference between bullet drop. Remember, this is, this is charting the drop of the bullet. And remember, once the bullet leaves the barrel, it begins dropping immediately relative to the line of bore. Now, we're getting ready to use laser bore light. This laser is literally going to project the line of bore. Now, as soon as the bullet leaves the barrel, it's no longer in line with the line of bore, correct? It starts to drop away. So, if we just went ahead and used our laser bore light and uh, you know stuck it up here, it's not going to compensate for that bullet drop. We're angling it up, but wherever the bullet is, the bore is going to be pointed just a little bit higher. So what I like to do is uh, go ahead and uh, calculate for that. Now, unfortunately, currently there's there's a bug in this app. It's not allowing me to calculate for a zero sight height, but this is how you normally do it. Uh, what I would do is I would set my sight height to zero, and I set my uh, zero range for zero. There's a bug in it right now, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hit one. It's gonna get me close. Now, the next thing that I, and this is gonna chart my, my absolute drop from a uh, line of bore, just really quickly. Now, the next piece that I'm gonna need is the distance we're going to bore light from. Now, the Army uses a, a 10 meter of bore light distance, and they just use offsets. Uh, this is uh, the form that's right out of the Army Marksmanship Manual, and uh, I'll set it right here. I don't know if you can see that. Well, it's sideways, so there we go. And what it is, it's it's got a bunch of grids on it, and uh, they use it as a uh, kind of a multi-use tool to, you know, plot offsets. If you got your laser on the side, bottom, you know, whatever, uh, they've got offsets for it. Now we're not standardized. So we're gonna have to figure out our own data to plug into this because we're not using standard M4s with standard mounting and and all this other stuff, and we're not using standard ammunition. So. What I need to do is figure out the available distance that I have to zero at. You might not have 10 meters. Maybe you have 8 meters. Uh, you know, maybe it's the, the hallway in your house or your living room. Whatever you're going to use, your, your backyard, uh, within local and state regulations. Uh, so we're going to figure out what available distance that we have to work with. Okay? And then we're going to go ahead and uh, make sure that that distance is reflected on here. Okay? So let's just say that I'm going to go ahead and use 10 meters. Well, I'm going to scroll through here until I get my uh, range increments, and I'm going to put in 10. Now, for our bore lighting process, I don't I don't need you know this to go all the way out to 400, so I'm just going to put this to 100 for the moment, and that's going to give me the drop, uh, you know, every 10 yards all the way out to where I put it. Now, if, if all you have is eight yards, well then just put in uh, eight. There we go. And now that gives me 8. So let's just say I'm using 10. There we go. And what this is telling me is that, you know, roughly, since I'm, I'm using one one yard on mine, you know, if, you, if you're using uh, the updated version, you'll be able to do this at zero. This is telling me that at 10 yards, right, my bullet is 0 0.02 inches below my line of bore. It's very important because we're going to put a laser in here. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm, I'm going to write this down on my document here. Okay, or I've, I've got, I laminate my little uh, uh, grid here for the laser bore light and I'm going to write down negative uh, 0 0.02. 
And then let's go back here and change our sight height back to uh, normal. So I'm going to put my zero range back to uh, 48, just like normal. I'm going to put my sight height uh, back to normal. And now we're going to go out to 10. And now what it's telling me is uh, I'm getting a, a, a drop of 2.69 inches, right? So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. Now, what I need to do is I need to go ahead and compensate for this bullet drop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract my bullet drop from where my round actually is. So that, that's going to give me uh, 2.67 inches. Now, what do I need to do now? Now, I need to go ahead and uh, I'm just going to slide this off to the side here. I need to go ahead and measure. So I actually go ahead and uh, measure 2.67 inches from my laser bore light uh, dot. And that's going to give me a reference mark for where my sight needs to, to be in reference to where the laser bore light should be at that specified range. So that's that's how we figure out uh, what distance we need to laser bore light. Don't just open up your manual, you know, and uh, it says do it at, do it at 10, it should be here, it should be there. Uh, it's not going to work out exactly for your rifle. And we're, we're trying to put as much good data into this process as possible to give us the most accurate results, right? Bad data in, bad results out. So we're going to try to be as accurate as possible, you know, put as much accurate data in here. And, you know, since we're going to go through this process, you know, try to do it right, okay? So uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, set up for the laser bore lighting. Now, you can see here, uh, I've got my board over here, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, move this camera so that you guys can actually see what's going on over here. Okay, perfect. Now, I've got some other uh, tools here that I'm, I'm going to use. I've got some uh, uh, tape here, and I, I've got a bubble level. Now, you'll see where this uh, bubble level is going to come in handy. Uh, because we want to make sure that we're putting these uh, vertical lines in, you know, perfectly uh, uh, aligned uh, uh, vertically. Because uh, it's going to give us good reference as to whether or not we're, we're holding our rifle vertically. Uh, so, what, what I need to do now is go ahead and set up my laser bore light. So, I'm going to go ahead and put in the dowel rod here. I've got my battery. Uh, now, it's always good to practice a uh, good laser eye safety, right? Uh, I don't want to point this in anyone's eyes. Be careful of reflective surfaces uh, when you're using it. So I'm going to make sure that uh, this is, in fact, in the off position like it should be. And I, I don't store this with batteries in it because uh, I don't want any corrosion. If you are storing things with batteries in it, like your optics, it's always good to take it out and uh, clean them periodically. I did mention it was 90 degrees in the sun here, or in the shade. So I'm going to place this in. Now, I always want to turn this... Uh, uh, clockwise because that's the way it threads in. If I turn it counterclockwise, it's going to unthread. Now, this time, if, if you haven't weighted down, uh, you know, your whatever you're using to hold your weapon uh, or whatever you're using to uh, project the laser onto, uh, now's a good time to do it. We don't want this to move around at all. So, what I'm going to do now here is I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. And we've got a laser, and you guys should be able to see that. Yep, perfect. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take a marker. It's always a good idea to use a marker that is a different color than the color of your laser. Okay, it goes without saying. Now, I'm just going to screw this up a little bit here, so get a little bit of movement. Now, I know that this board is within arm's reach of this weapon right now. It's at this distance so that you can see this without wasting a whole bunch of time with me doing wind sprints, you know, 10 meters up and down range, because I'm out here by myself uh, doing this doing this laser. Uh, when you do this, you want to do this at the actual range that we discussed, that we got from, uh, you know, our ballistic calculator and that we have from our available space. Don't do this at five feet, okay? I'm only doing this for demonstration purposes so that I can get through this, uh, this video series and, you know, and kind of some semblance of order. Uh, I would actually be doing this at 10 meters. And it's always helpful to have a buddy helping you do this. Okay, it's, it's going to minimize a lot of running and moving around chances of this getting bumped. So, 
I'm just going to go ahead and take this black marker. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do, okay, I'm making sure that this is vertical. And I'm going to go ahead and make a mark. Okay, that's my start point mark. Now, the Army Manual, and you can follow the Army Manual. They've got instructions on, on how to do this. The Army Manual will tell you to do uh, half turns. Uh, with my experience of using this and instructing people how to use it, I, I found it a bit more efficient to do quarter turns. It's a bit more of a pain because you have to make sure you don't, you got more chance to move the rifle, but I found it gives you a lot better idea uh, and gives of what's going on down there, and uh, you can make your corrections quite a bit quicker. So, and I'm going to be very careful when I rotate this because I don't want to move the rifle. So I'm going to do a quarter turn. So obviously if we're doing this in pairs, I'd have the guy down range, you know, giving me these commands, quarter turn, quarter turn. Now, I'm going to go ahead and make a mark. There we go. And now we're going to go quarter turn. There we go. It's a little light there. There we go. And now I'm going to go quarter turn again. And now we're back to start point, right? I'm do quarter turn again, back to start point. Now, when I do this in pairs, the, the last turn here is always start point. And that, that's an indicator so that we both know, hey, we should be back at the start point. And the laser should be back at the first dot that we put. This is a very important check. If that laser doesn't go back to the first dot you did, you move something here. Okay, you, you, you move the position of the laser, you, you move the rifle, or this move, or you, you're using kind of an inferior piece of equipment, and I have seen that happen too. There's a lot of cheap lasers out there, and I've only recommended one laser, right? Uh, we're not all set up to do R&D on our own, so just, just use what's proven. You know, the LBS 300C, been in service with the Army for a while, and it works pretty good. So... You can see here, now this is at close range. At farther range, you're gonna see a, a bit more spread in, in the group, but I've, I've kinda adjusted it out so you can see a little bit. And this is why I like using the quarter turns. You can see here, this has given me a really nice uh, pattern to determine where I need to move it, right? So what I'm gonna actually gonna do is I want to adjust it to the center. There's my center, right? So if we're doing commands, the, the guy down range, you can just tell me, I need you to come up a little bit. Now, you can follow the manufacturer's manual, which should tell you how many clicks uh, equal what MOA at that distance, and do the math, you know, to figure out what it equals at uh, 10 yards. Uh, but for this, it, it is a little bit more efficient just to kind of, uh, uh, you know, kind of give it the swag adjustment. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to be very careful not to move the, the rifle. I'm going to bring it up. Then I'm going to bring it right. Okay, and we're just adjusting the center. And then we're just going to go ahead and uh, erase our work. And we're going to do it one more time. Hopefully one more time. So um, I, I am at the start point. There we go. Quarter turn, quarter turn, well, we do get some movement, let me move it back here, thought for a second it was going to turn on itself, quarter turn, Turn. That's pretty close. Uh, it's a little difficult because I've got it so close, I'm not getting a whole lot of movement out of the laser. If this was out at, at 10, uh, I'd see a bit more and I could make a correction off of that. But for our purposes right now, it's difficult for me to tell, you know, if I'm bumping the laser or not. So basically what I'm going to, what I, the process is here is that we just keep doing this check until the laser pretty much just turns on itself. Okay, and that's telling us it's in line with the line of bore and there's no deviation. Uh, 
if you're using a cheaper product, it is very possible that uh, you could get a, a laser that doesn't have uh, fine enough adjustments to, to get it to do that. That's all we're trying to do is we're just trying to get it to spin on itself and we just go back and forth through the check and <clears throat> adjust as necessary until that's what we have. Okay, so now we can move on to the next step. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my uh, laser bore light target that I'm using. I've just got some tape on it and I've already pre-measured out the offset that the line of bore should be from the line of sight at that distance. Again, this is not the actual distance that I'm doing it at. This is demonstration purposes only. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and take this level and I'm going to place it along one of the vertical lines. Just like that. And I'm going to level the bubbles. There we go. Perfect. Now, why did I do that? I did that because now I can use uh, the horizontal and uh, vertical lines that are on the outer ring of the EOTech as a reference to tell if my weapon is perfectly vertical or if I've got some cant built into it. So I can use these, you know, the, the grid that's in here to make sure it's on. <clears throat> now, of course, right now you're seeing that the laser's not on the dot for the laser bore light. That's fine. You know, all, all I need to do is just uh, make a small adjustment here. <clears throat> There we go. And now I'm back on. And of course, I'd, I'd refine this so it's it's perfectly on there. And then all I'm going to do is, uh, you know, take a, an adjustment tool, you know, and for this, it's it's nothing more than a, a flathead screwdriver. I'm going to get behind it, turn on my EOTech, dim it down so I can just see the dot. And without moving the, the laser, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, make corrections, uh, both on the vertical and, and horizontal, until my EOTech <coughs> reticle is right here on my pre-measured dot. Now, <clears throat> should note that when we're going ahead and uh, manipulating these EOTechs, there, there is a little bit of kind of zero voodoo that goes on with them. And uh, basically what it amounts to is that you've got springs on either side of these screws that you're using to adjust this, and sometimes they, they stick inside. Uh, you'll really see it on the range, you know, if you're doing some zero work, you'll, you'll crank off your shot group, and you'll have one round that's uh, back in the previous grouping spot, and then the others have moved, and you're not quite sure what happened. A lot of times what it is is that that emitter just kind of stuck there and it wasn't until the uh, the shock of the recoil that went through the weapon uh, unfroze it. So what I like to do is I'll, I'll just take this and I'll just tap it on the vertical and uh, horizontal axis. Now I'm giving it kind of a firm little tap but I'm not beating it. It's it's a very durable sight uh, but I'm not telling you to go take a ball peen hammer and, and really go to town on this thing. I'm just telling you to you know give it a tap on the, on the top and on the side just to make sure those lasers settle uh, each time you go ahead and uh, make the correction. So that, that's it, guys. Uh, laser bore lighting in a nutshell. It's pretty simple. Uh, the most complicated process that we really had was plugging everything into the ballistic calculator and then actually figuring out the offset between the line of bore and the uh, uh, projected path of the bullet and being able to compensate that for that and figure out uh, where we need to do our, our laser bore light range at. You know, other, other than that, it's pretty easy. You know, we go ahead and stick the laser bore light in. Uh, we, we throw some dry erase marks up on a, on a board or a laminated sheet of paper, turn it until it's aligned with our line of bore, and then we go ahead and uh, adjust our sight to it. it. It's really that simple. So kind of a simple process. You know, this, this should take you, you know, maybe, maybe an hour or two at the house, but I, I didn't shoot any rounds. You know, I didn't waste any money, didn't waste any time out on the range. Uh, and when I go out to the range, uh, my zero is going to be pretty close to on. Now I say pretty close to on. Uh, Usually what we used to see in the military when we you did a proper laser bore light on your weapon uh, You would have guys that would only need like a, a few clicks uh, of adjustment You know so they would they would be hitting right at that that black silhouette on the, the zero target You know it's really a significant game when these things came out in the military. I mean it really changed a lot of things uh, Before that all we were doing was uh, you know returning our weapons to a mechanical zero which sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't you know, and you could have guys that are on target, off target, and you spend all day out there. So, you know, for the, the cost that you pick this up, you know, you, you do save quite a bit of time and ammunition. And there's a lot of other tools that you can use this for. 
um, you know, for you instructors that are out there in the industry, uh, one great tool uh, that you can use for this, if you're actually teaching iron sights, uh, I've used this as a tool to determine uh, what your students seeing when they look through their uh, their sights. Uh, throw the rifle down on a on a vise, uh, <clears throat> have them sight the rifle into the target, and then have a buddy uh, lay down in front of uh, the weapon with this uh, uh, laser. And all he does is he goes ahead and adjusts this laser, and the student tells him when he perceives that that dot is at the center of the front sight post with a properly aligned sight picture. Once he says okay, well you tell him to back off and you go ahead and look through it. Assuming you have proper sight picture, you'll be able to see if he's off to the left, right, top or bottom. Then you can pull off, have him do it again, and confirm that that's what's going on so you can see where his eyes aligned, and then uh, correct it. Uh, there's also a lot of uh, dry fire tools you can use for this. You know, we could actually set up dry fire where you have somebody with their, their hand over the laser. When the weapon goes off, you can pull it off, put a mark, do it again, and you can actually do grouping like that. Uh, you know, in addition to doing dry fire exercises and watching to see if uh, uh, the laser is moving on or off target. So uh, just some ideas here. Uh, and, you know, it's... You know, might be a little bit of trouble, you know, some people don't do this stuff, but, uh, you know, you, you get a lot of gains uh, from it without ever going to the range. So, uh, I hope all that made sense, and uh, that'll be the end of the, the kind of static videos here. Uh, from, from here on out, uh, we'll be doing some videos out on the range where we're actually going to put this, we're going to shoot some live rounds through the chronograph, we'll run through some shooting drills, we'll run through all the zeroing procedures. So, uh, you know, next uh, sets of videos, we'll, we'll actually be out at the range. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed it up to this point. I hope everything made sense. And, uh, you know, hey, if you got questions, uh, feel free to shoot them my way. I'm always happy to respond.